And it's not tied to enlightenment either. And I think that's a really important thing that it's like, okay, those who are enlightened have inner peace. Sure. But also one can have inner peace and not have to live this perception of what it means to be enlightened. Yeah. And I would offer, we're all enlightened too. We all have inner peace. We're all enlightened. Yes. We all have spiritual wisdom to share, right? We're all spirits embodied in these forms with wisdom to share. Mm -hmm. So when we keep pulling ourselves back and saying, oh, well, they have it, but I don't. That's where we need to start asking ourselves, why are we separating ourselves from the whole? Why are we saying they have it, but I don't? When the truth is, it is inside of you. And the true journey isn't finding it in someone else. Now, when you see it in someone else, it might be helping you understand what do I desire to discover within me and reconnect with. So that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful sign to say, hey, I appreciate that in you. Now that's signaling to say that I have it. Maybe my opportunity is to reawaken or rediscover that within myself. And once I do that, then I can find another attribute maybe in someone else, or maybe I find a new one within myself. But I now know, hey, I would really like to rediscover that within myself. That's where you can go outside and say, what are tools that might help me connect with that? Mindfulness being a wonderful one, right? But in what way? Because mindfulness is so huge. That is such a vast place to say, oh, I'm going to do mindfulness practices. All right. Well, if I'm searching for inner peace, I'm searching for inner peace. Mindfulness is going to be outside of me. Right? Right. But is that really going to guide me to inner peace? We have to ask ourselves that. Or is that going to help me appreciate the external world, which is still such a beautiful gift? But... Is that step guiding me to inner peace? Yeah. If it's not correlated to what's going on around you, it's you determining the harmony within your form, yourself, aligning your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual, then wherever you are shouldn't actually matter to what's going within. Yeah. I think that's a fair point. I mean, not to say that being out in nature in a walk or meditating in a garden or something like that can't it's not like it can't help but if you're only experiencing it the perception of inner peace in that type of setting then are you really having do you actually have inner peace are you living that lifestyle and 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 bringing learning how to bring it into all parts of your life so then it becomes more of escapism than it does actual true tool that helps you throughout all aspects of, of your, your experience of life. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's so important for us to continue to discuss this. There's, again, we will always say there's nothing inherently wrong. If that is the journey you are on and the one that you're navigating, you're still finding benefit, right? You are going to find benefit by gathering tools outside and appreciating the external world. It's a kid. But you have to ask, what is my goal? What is my true goal? If I'm saying my true goal is inner peace, then you're not going to find it outside of yourself. We have to say what tools are going to bring me internal into the internal calm. And then align it with that. So mindfulness practices that drive me inward then instead of into the external world. 